Uh, no, I've just hung out with some of my teammates. Um, you know, just uh, just a lot of team bonding. Um, you know, trips like this are always great for that. Just getting to know one another even more, and you know, being overseas just gives us a chance to you know bond with each other in a new environment. Um, so just taking advantage of that. Gary, can you imagine you would drive on the left side in the US? You said, can I imagine that? Uh, <laughs> probably not. <laughs> I don't know if I want to be driving over here as of yet, man. I, I'm definitely not ready for that. Kyrie, on your right. right. Yeah. You are one of the ambassadors of Mamba mentality. Now you live in Boston where lives the GOAT Tom Brady. Do you program to meet him, to compare yourself with him? You said compare myself with him? Yeah? No. Nah. About mentality. No. Nah. You better say the Mamba mentality? Yeah. Uh, I mean, he's a totally different sport. Um, you know, his career is pretty, you know, pretty much cemented in terms of how great he is. Um, you know, I'm still on that path, um, you know, just being a consistent winner, um, you know, expecting just uh, great performances on, on a daily basis um, from myself. And I don't try to compare it to anyone. I try to have my own experiences and lead my own career. Um, but, you know, it's always um, an appreciation from my end of seeing great players do great things over their careers and leave a lasting legacy for fans like us of, of how great they, they were in the sport on and off the field or court or whatever. Uh, the place they, they may be you know, performing at. So you know, I'm appreciative of greatness and how diligent and strategic they are in getting things done. Um, and, and the work usually comes off the field or off the court that no one ever sees and then makes it look pretty easy on the, on the field or on the court. Thank you. Harry, you don't need much help, but uh, I think the is a good chance to keep your staff open and your European uh, I mean, I, I'm just, I'm appreciative of all fan vote, man. Um, you know, it, it's uh, just a fan of basketball, a fan of sport. And now that I, I get to mark off my kind of bucket list of playing at the O2 Arena, like I just, I can't wait for that experience. And, um, you know, to, to have the, the opportunity to come here to Europe, and, and especially London, and grow the game of black basketball for the NBA. And, um, you know, the world of sport has a way of connecting people all over. And just appreciative to be one of the pioneers of that. Uh, just up and down pace. Those those guys are, you know, so young and active, and they do a great job getting to their spots. Led by Ben Simmons, um, who does a great job getting everyone involved and playing with an unbelievable pace and being aggressive. And um, for us, we just have to play with, um, you know, our unique intensity on the defensive end, uh, make it uncomfortable, and, and really give the fans a show um, and bring the you know Celtic pride over here into London. Are you traveled internationally for basketball? Is it a different animal being a member of the Celtics wearing that green? You say, oh, say that one more time. Is it a different animal now being with the Celtics, wearing the green? Uh, I mean, it, it uh, you know, it's definitely uh, you know, the expectations of wearing uh, the green is uh, you know, probably through the roof. And and I think I said it yesterday is that you kind of have to be in the uniform to, to understand that or be a fan of the organization to understand what Celtic Pride actually stands for. And you see some of the players that have that have come through throughout the organization and what they talk about behind it and. Uh, you get a sense of it by the way they talk and the conviction and, you know, just being out there and representing that Boston across your chest, it means a lot. Uh, Harry, can you talk about your uh, relationship with Nike and what it means to be to have your own signature shoe and the Kyrie Port? Oh, uh, man, it's, uh, it's an unbelievable thing. Um, you know, I'm truly blessed and, 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 I, and I take full advantage of being able to create something that, uh, you know, is great for the culture and something I could be proud of and something that... Uh, you know, I could honestly show my family years and years and generations to, to come um, to be with, you know, the best brand in the world, Nike, be able to have the, the freedom to create, the freedom to do things that inspire others, you know, innovation on their end of always wanting to be the leading brand in, in, in technology in terms of performance um, based. And, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm really fortunate to be a, a part of that. You know, it's a long lineage of athletes that have come throughout Nike, and I'm just glad that my name could be net, uh, niched in there. Um, you already won it all, Olympics, uh, World Championship, NBA title at one point, only 25. At one point, did your motivation go down a little bit? You said did my motivation go down a little bit? Uh, it's it's always new challenges, man, being a professional, um, you know, and, and that's something I appreciate. Uh, it all comes from within. It's a belief uh, internally that you have to have that. There's so much more to accomplish, um, even when you know something great happens. Uh, you know, you celebrate it right there for that moment. You celebrate with your family and friends, and then 
pretty much like everyone else, it's time to move on. You know, there's always tomorrow after that. That's what Brad, Brad told us that, you know, it's always tomorrow, win or lose. And you have to be able to, to kind of live in that moment too. And um, it's great to accomplish great things. I'm, I'm always I'm always appreciative of it, of, of the steps it took to get there. And um, and then when the new challenge comes, it's, you got to figure it out all over again, which makes it pretty frustrating at the same time, but fun. Um, because, you know, who doesn't like doing <laughs> challenges in life and going through some, some tough some tough shit? Excuse Harry, my language. If you were captain of the all-star team, who would be the first player you'd pick on to your team? That's a setup. You know, <laughs> you know <laughs> it's a setup. <laughs> Harry, how do you make sure this game isn't a distraction? You're on such a good run at the moment. You're... You said distraction? Yeah, how, how can it not be? Because you're on a, a six-game winning run. Uh, you know, by just going out there, reacclimating ourselves to, to playing, you know, NBA basketball again. We've been off for about three days now, so, um, you know, I know guys are pretty fresh, ready to get back out there. Um, you know, the focus on the game, we prepare as, as, as we always do, and just going to demand excellence, and it's just our job to go put on a show. Final question for Kyrie. Kyrie, you've played the Sixers team several times now over the last few years. What are the big differences you've noted between when you, when you played them in Cleveland and when you played them in Boston? Uh, I would just say just the flow. Um, of course, Brett Brown does a great job of getting those guys ready. Uh, but, um, you know, just they, their pieces are coming back and they're really forming a team that they want to have for the future. And, um, you know, I'm pretty sure the guys behind the scenes, the head honchos of the organization are trying to make moves either at the trade deadline or uh, in free agency. So, you know, we'll see what happens. But going against a, a young team like this that's developing, uh, going to be great for for years to come and um, you know he's just excited to go against uh, a team like that.